um, I can get that to you later, but they sent out a quarterly magazine on different topics. And this one was on the communion of God. And it was something on my heart to share. And I'm going to quote a few things from this uh, uh, booklet, but they got different men writing like John Owen, Charles Spurgeon, uh, Matthew Barker, Thomas Brooks, um, the communion with the triune God, because all three persons of the Trinity, uh, we are to commune with. Um, so if we go back to the beginning, turn in your Bibles to Genesis 2, at verse 7, uh, you, you will see clearly um, what the Lord has done here in creation. He created man. And in verse 2, 7, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So being a living soul, we are made in the image of the living God, and he breathed his, breath, breathed his very life into us. And then you, you, we won't go into all the detail, but with Adam, but you see that Adam named the animals. Uh, then God brought him a helper and, and, and Eve. But um, throughout this creation, and we, we see throughout scriptures that God created man, uh, that we would glorify him, that we would, we would know him. And uh, if you turn to Revelation 4.11, we'll just go to the back of the Bible real quick too. And there's a lot of scriptures we're going to go through, but uh, we see in Revelation 4.11 why all things are created. It says, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you have created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So all things were created for the pleasure and the glory of the living God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. For his own pleasure he created all things. And, of course, we know that sin has... Uh, came into the human race and man has fallen and ruined but i still see in god's redemptive plan that he 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 communes with men and um i've been reading through the old testament and um again this year and just reading some things and it's like wow seeing in scriptures more and more how god walks uh with men um now we know that that after the fall does anyone know who uh, who was men mentioned first on uh, uh, on who walked with God? Does anyone know who that was? Do I have to press over or anything? I believe uh, I would. Anyone know? State the question nope. again there, Chad. Oh, yeah. My question is, who was the first to walk with God as after the fall into sin? Enoch. Enoch, yes. Genesis 5.22, if you turn in there, Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters, Genesis 5.22 and 23. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. And uh, so he walked with God. It, it says that he pleased God, um, and so Enoch walked with god so we see in the old testament that god is a a a god who communes and dwells and is with his people and he hasn't changed god it, it continues to be with the church and i know israel and the church are not the same but even israel god meets with israel meets with his people dwells with them not as the same in the new covenant where we have the indwelling of the spirit which should even be greater for us um but but you see men throughout history now walking with the living God. And so communion with God is so important. And I'll just quote this uh, from Stephen Sharnock here. Uh, Stephen Sharnock lived uh, quite a long time ago. And um, let me just read this after I can find it here. Stephen Sharnock says, There is no communion with God without a renewed soul. What communion can there between a living God and a dead heart? God loathes sin, and man loves sin. God loves holiness, man loathes holiness. How can these contrary affections meet together in an amicable friendship? We must have his life restored to us before we can be instated in communion with him. So, um, sin has great effects but now through the lord jesus christ we have this communion restored and i just want to show you throughout scripture how men 
walked with God. Obviously, Noah in Genesis 6, 8, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And you see Noah com uh, obeyed God. Um, he followed the Lord. It says in Genesis 2, 6, 22, thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so he did. So God's grace starts to save these men throughout history. And you see that they walk with the living God. Um, what does uh, anyone know about Abraham? What did God call Abraham? The friend of God. Friend of God. Genesis 15, uh, 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. So Abraham, uh, later on in Scripture, says he was a friend of God. And he communed with God. And you see Abraham walking and obeying the Lord uh, throughout. And he was fully persuaded by faith. Remember, God called Abraham out of his idolatry uh, to walk with the living God. So God has never changed. God has not changed. Um, he's still the same today. And we are called to fellowship with the living God, to commune with him. And um, we need to take this to heart that communion. Um, there's a lot of effort that needs to take place on our part to truly seek after the living God and to know him intimately. And uh, James 2 says that Abraham was a friend of God. And it had a cross-reference that I thought was interesting in Second uh, Chronicles 20. Um, so James mentions that Abraham was a friend of God. Isn't that amazing? Abraham was a friend of the living God. And uh, And to think we as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are friends of god we are we're not only his servants we are his chosen people we are a holy people and we are united in christ and remember jesus said that uh i i i, I call you my friends so he called that to his disciples but really we're, we're disciples of christ too the, the 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 apostles aren't higher and greater than us we are we are we are in the same faith we are friends of the living god have you contemplated on this and it, are you seeing that God calls us to himself to be with him, to know him intimately? Um, and in 2 Chronicles uh, 20, listen to what Jehoshaph, uh, Je Jehoshaph, Je Jehoshaphat says. He stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God, the God in heaven? And you rule, don't you, do you not rule over all the kingdoms and of, of, of all the heathen? And in your hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? I mean, I love how he reminds God of his power and reminds God of who he is. And that's, that's how we should commune with God is reminding him who he is. And, to, and, 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 and we have scriptures, just, just, just so many declarations of who our great God is. In verse 7, he says, and are you not our God? who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, your friend forever. Abraham was a friend of God forever. And we in the covenant of grace are, are, are friends of God forever. This is how re amazing redemption is. And it's been 26 years since Christ saved me. And I still can't get over that he, he would save me one, but he saved me, not just what he did, but to bring that, that restoration, that communion back, that now I can come into a living fellowship and marry to the Lord Jesus Christ in Romans 7. So are, are, you, are you focused on your communion and relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? You know, in a time like we're in right now, being isolated and all this stuff, it is so important for us to fellowship closer and closer with our God, the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Christ wants us to bring us to the Father who is a father of love. I mean, God is so loving and he loves us so much. It, it's going to blow our brains apart if we, if, we, if, we, if we get ravished with this love so much that we're going to be bouncing off the walls with the love uh, of the father towards us. And does anyone have any, any testimonies or comments yeah. about how God has <laughs> shown you? Sorry. Any, any to share? Um, so think about that communion people don't really talk about but i think in the church we should talk about our communion 
And how are you fellowship? How's your fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ? How are you communing with him? And of course, there's ups and downs and, uh, and different things. Our own hearts are very, very fickle. Um, we go back and forth. And, and uh, of course, our sin interrupts us, which is which uh, we cry out, oh, oh, wretched man that I am who can save me from this body of sin and death. Um, turn to Exodus uh, chapter 30. But we're just going to go over a few things. But even Moses, Moses was face to face with the living God. Um, and if, if you read about that in Exodus where Moses was, was face to face, he had to put a veil over his, his head. And Israelites couldn't even look upon him. And then he would go in and take his veil off and see God face to face. And uh, one of the writers in, uh, I'm sure I remember if it was Thomas Brooks, in this communion with God, he says, we should have such communion with God that, that we are glowing when we come out of our prayer closets. And it's like, are you yearning for this? Are you desiring this? And I'm going to read some other quotes by Brooks later about that, on how we, 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 we fail in our communion with God. But um, we should be pressing in to commune with the Father, the Son, and the Spirit and not um, take this lightly. And I just don't hear it talked about amongst professing Christians of, of, you know, how's your walk with the Lord Jesus? How's your, how's, your, how's your marriage going with Christ? How's your desires and your heart and affections being, being changed by the living God? Um, in Exodus 30, I think we also have a hardness in our own hearts that we think God is still against us somewhat in our own minds, our own religious flesh. We want to think God is against us. But God so much delights in his people throughout scriptures. And if you turn to Exodus 30, uh, 45 and 46, or no, excuse me, I think it's, I had that one wrong, 29, Exodus 29, 45 and 46. This jumped out at me when I read through Exodus. And man, I just love the Old Testament scriptures. They're so good. Exodus 29, 45 and 46. And it says, I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their God. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. For what reason? That I may dwell among them. I love the word dwell. Dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. God dwells within us now by the God, the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is that tabernacle. He dwelt in flesh. So we may know the living Christ and know him personally. And God dwells among us in by the spirit and through his word. We can, that's why we continue to meditate on his word. And we must use the means uh, of his word um, to, to see that. I'm just showing these scriptures that you see that God says, I want to dwell among you. And it's not, and God hasn't changed. He still loves to dwell in his people and dwell among us that we may be with him and be close to him. And, and, and fellowship with him. Um, turn to Leviticus 26, 11 and 12. We'll see that again as well. Um, I've been so blessed by reading in the Old Testament scriptures. Leviticus 26, 11 and 12. And God says, And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you, and will be your God, and you shall be my people. I'm the Lord of God. Again, he reminds me, which brought you out of the fourth, out of the land of Egypt. And so, just like God brought Israel out of Egypt, he, if he has saved you, he's brought you out of the bondage of sin. For what reason? That he may walk among you. That he may be with you. And that we may be with him. And uh, our heart's desire should be going after the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, don't let sin hinder you repent and confess and turn from your sin and quickly go to the Lord Jesus Christ. He delights in us. And that is the amazing thing I, I, I see in scripture that God has never changed. The Old Testament scriptures are the same. Uh, There's the same God and um, God chose Israel. It says um, not because Israel was so special. He didn't choose us because anything special about us. It's all by God's grace. Uh, turn to Deuteronomy 4, that's 4, and so Israel, even though they were rebellious and stiff-necked people, God still had a remnant, he still dwelt among them, and you see men who, 
who, who continue to walk with him. And it says Joshua, as I read through, just finished reading through Joshua. Joshua walked with the Lord, did all that the Lord commanded him. Um, God gave these men life in them that they would obey him and follow him. Uh, Deuteronomy 4.4, 4, it says, but you, uh, let's see, verse 3, you, your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that follow Baal Peor, the Lord thy God, have destroyed them from among you. But you that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you this day. So cleaving unto the Lord is used a lot in the Old Testament scriptures. Cleaving unto the Lord is another beautiful uh, description of how we are to seek our God and to commune with him and cleave unto him um, and, 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 and seek him with all of our hearts, all of our souls, all of our minds. Uh, Deuteronomy 4.29, another one. But if you from here on shall seek the Lord your God, you shall find him. If you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. So that was God's command to Israel. And it's the same command today. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. We are to seek him. Seek uh, first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all shall be added unto us. You see the world around us is fearing and they're wearing masks. And they're, uh, uh, and it's like, folks, is God sovereign? Is God in charge of all things? God said he'll protect us and keep us. We could trust him to walk by faith and to seek him and to know that he will keep us and cover us. Seek him with all your heart was what he called Israel to do. And he hasn't changed. God says to seek him, to seek him with all of our hearts. Uh, Deuteronomy 7, 6 and 8. 7, 6 and 8. See if I got this right. Yeah, six for the for you are a holy people unto the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a special people unto himself. This is Israel. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. You see the elect of Israel right there. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of, of, of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, which keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So God is a holy God who called Israel. And when you see, the, I see these verses, I think of the church too. That God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light, light to show what? To show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his holiness. To show forth, he says, you're a chosen generation, a chosen race, a holy priesthood. It also says in the Old Testament, the Levites were his people, his inheritance. Well, now in the New Testament covenant, we are his people, his chosen. We are priests under our God. And it says that in Revelation. And as priests, we have a special place in his heart. All the church, all true believers have a, a special place in the heart of Christ. In fact, in Isaiah, it says, I, I've graven your name on my palms of my hand. That's how intimate Jesus Christ loves us. And man, do we need to bask in this love. What a lover of my soul. That's why Charles Wesley said, Jesus, lover of my soul. Do you see the love of Christ? And he loves us and he continues to love us. And his love is beckoning us to continue to come to him. In Matthew, uh, 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 I think it's, yeah, Matthew 11, 28, 30, a great invitation uh, where Jesus Christ says, come unto me, all you are heavily burdened and laden. Now, I was reading through that a couple months ago, and I was thinking, wow, that, that's an invitation for those who are burdened with their sin, but then they also applied it to believers. Come unto me, God, the Lord Jesus says, keep coming to him. We're to cast our burdens on him. And the Lord says, come to me, and, I'll, and learn of me, he says. Learn of me and, and take your yoke upon me. That's Christ's invitation to us to continue to come to him and learn of him. And that we're to take his yoke upon us and he'll, he'll teach us. And that is a great invitation. So Jesus Christ is still saying, come, come believers, come to him. We are to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, continually come to him and continually to seek him and know him intimately. So, um, Deuteronomy 
a few more in Deuteronomy. Turn to Deuteronomy uh, 10, 9, and it says, Wherefore, Levi hath no part nor inheritance with his brethren. The Lord is his inheritance, according as the Lord God, thy God promised. So there again, the Levites were his inheritance. We as believers are his inheritance because we are united to the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, do you see your great, precious Christ who has brought all these blessings to us and that we are his? Um, Deuteronomy 30, 20. Let me turn to there, 30, 20. Um, it says, verse 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live, that you may love the Lord your God and that you may obey his voice and that you may cleave unto him for he is your life and the length of your days that you may dwell in the land which the Lord your uh, swear unto your fathers Abraham to Isaac and Jacob to again this promise to Israel that God would be their life uh, where does that sound like in, in the New Testament Colossians 3, can you hear me? It's unstable. Okay, I got a note on my screen saying it's unstable. Colossians 3, 1 through 5. It says that, um, seek first the kingdom of God. Set your affections on things above. For Christ, who is your life when he shall appear. Christ is our life. Just, just like in the Old Testament. Steve? Yeah, I can hear you, Chad. It's, uh, you might have to move a little closer to your <clears throat> router at some point, but you're doing okay right now. <clears throat> Okay. I was going to say, at, one, at some point, it would be nice to see maybe a list of these uh, references or synonyms of seeking God. This is really a good list that you have okay. here. <clears throat> yeah, I'll have to type it up. I have my scratch notes here. But um, I yet just, uh, okay, looks like we're good. Yeah, you're good right now. Okay, good. Um, so I'm looking to make sure I have good battery charge. All right. So anyhow, um, so Colossians 315 is a great, same exhortation that, that the Lord is, is told Israel is that we would love him, seek him, set our affections and our desires on him. Why did Jesus Christ save you? For what purpose? So we may know him, that we may be in fellowship with him and seek him. We're called to seek him. Um, there's so many other verses <laughs> that I could go to and <laughs> get through here. But let's turn to Psalms because King David, what, is, what was he known for? Does anyone know what the, the, what it says about King David? He was he was a man after God's own heart. After God's own heart. Now there's a man who was saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, saved by the Father, and and his life was one of just seeking the Lord. My oh my! If you just want to meditate on scriptures and seeking the Lord, when I see seek the Lord in Psalms, my heart just goes yes, Lord, I want to seek you more. And um, in Psalm twenty seven. In Psalms 27, what does David say? The Lord, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Verse 4, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. In verse 8, or verse 7, Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, Seek ye my face, my heart said, Your face, Lord, I will I seek. So that was David's cry, is to seek the Lord, to dwell in his temple, to behold the beauty of the Lord. But now we are the temples of the Lord. But what does 2 Corinthians says? We behold as in a mirror, the face of the, the, the glory of the Lord, as in a mirror, and are changed from glory to glory. Brethren, we are called to seek him and to behold the Lord Jesus Christ. Because what are we going to do in eternity? What does it say in Revelation? We shall see his face. We shall behold his glory. Um, and, and, and I'll get to those verses later in Revelation. There's so many good verses there. But David sought the Lord. Um, and found in him a dwelling place, a hiding, and hiding in the Lord and resting in Christ. That's our hiding place in Christ, 
Um, Psalm 42, you probably well know this one, but this is a good one too. It says, um, as a, as a deer panted after the brook, so pants my soul after God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? This is how, how much David longed for the living God. Are you longing for your God? Are you seeking him? Oh, I passed over a couple in Psalm 30, 120. I thought this one was good too. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for them that fear you which you have wrought for them that trust in you before the sons of men. You shall hide them in the secret of your presence from the pride of man. You shall keep them secret, secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. The Lord hides us and keeps us. Um, Psalm 32, 6 and 7. For this shall everyone that is godly shall pray unto you in a time when you may be found. Surely in the great, in the flood of great waters they shall not come near unto you. You are my hiding place, verse 7. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall compass me with songs of deliverance. So God is our hiding place, brethren. Hide in the Lord Jesus Christ. Get in the prayer closet. Seek him and hide in him and find him uh, to be your refuge. And he is our refuge, but we need to continue to seek him and hide in him. What a privilege it is uh, to have communion with our living God. And I don't want us to, to, I mean, it's so easy for us to get busy with things um, and get so sidetracked, and I'm guilty of this myself. But think of, 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 of Martha and Mary. I think of them so much. I remember Pastor Joe Jackowitz, who's out in California, preached um, a long time on, 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 uh, on this, and he mentioned this. It was so good. And he was talking about how we can get so stuck into service, service, service. And he said, we need to be like Mary. And sit at the feet of Jesus Christ. Luke 10, 38 through 42. Um, Mary sat at the feet of Christ. And the Lord Jesus said, this, this will not be taken from her. Martha was over there complaining. Saying, Lord, she doesn't help. And Mary sat there at the feet of Jesus Christ. And what did it say? She listened to Christ. Brethren, that should be our position. To sit at the feet of Christ. And to hear him speak and to be with him. And that's what he's calling us to be closer to him and draw near to him. Because any service, Joe Jack was, was saying, we could get so caught up with service, but we need to spend time sitting at the feet of Christ and sitting at his feet. And then, as you're knowing him, it will be the springboard to serve. And so we cannot be like Martha and serve, serve, serve and forget that we must be like Mary first. And sit at the feet of Jesus Christ. And he wants us to commune with him. He wants us to be with him. Um, so, um, <clears throat> Zephaniah 3.17, you want to think about a great verse, how God delights in you. It says that, that God sings over us with rejoicing. This is how much the Lord Jesus Christ loves you, loves me, that he sings over us with delighting. And, um, and that's amazing that Zephaniah 3.17, he rejoices over us. Um, Proverbs 8.30, this is what the Lord Jesus Christ thinks of us. He says, then when I was by him, this is as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were the sons of men. God delights in saving sinners. All of heaven rejoices over one sinner that repents. And so we who are his people, he delights in us. We, 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 we need to understand his love in a deeper way. And that's why Paul prayed in Ephesians 3 for the church of Ephesus. He says that we may know the depths, the, the width of his love that passes knowledge. That's why he, he gave those prayers in Ephesians 1. You can go back and look at those. But Ephesians 1 is a great prayer of Paul where he says, Oh, Father, that you may give them a spirit of revelation and the knowledge of him, that we may know uh, his calling that we may know um, his inheritance that he has in us. We, we need to pray that one for each other, that, that we would have that spirit of, of the revelation of the knowledge of Christ. Because these things must come by meditating and by, by God through his spirit revealing these things more and more to us, that we may know the depths of his love. Um, so I see throughout scripture in the Old Testament that men were communing, seeking him, David hungering and thirsting after the living God. Um, and we too 
need to have the, these, these desires increased in us. So ask the Lord to increase in our hearts uh, desires to seek after him. Um, I wanted to read this quote by uh, Thomas Charnock, I believe it was again. Let me turn Chad, there. what uh, what book is that by Charnock, if you don't mind? Oh, uh, let's see here. Hold on. Let me find it real quick. I, the wind has lost my grip here. Uh, this one is uh, no, no. Sorry, this one's by Thomas uh, Brooks. Thomas Brooks. The title of his thing is "Thirsting and Longing." And it comes from, um, the privy key of heaven, the privy P R I V Y key of heaven. The complete verse Thomas Brooks by him too. So yeah, a lot of the old writers write some really good stuff. And what Thomas Brooks wrote was on thirsting after God, thirsting and longing. And he says this, my advice and counsel is this. In all your closet prayers, thirst and long after communion with God. In all your private retirements, take up in nothing below fellowship with God. In nothing below a sweet and spiritual enjoyment of God. And then he quotes Psalm 27, 4, which I already read. And he says, the temple of the Lord without communion with the Lord of the temple will not satisfy David's soul. And then he quotes uh, Psalm 42 as the deer pants after the water. So... My soul pants after you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for God. And, um, and, and he, he just says, wherever you go in your closets, press hard after real and sensible communion with God so that you may come out of your closets with some shine of God in your spirits as Moses came down from the mount with his face shining in Exodus 34. Oh, do not take up in your closet prayers, tears, joys, or enlargements but labor long to enjoy that inward and close fellowship with God in your closets as may leave such a choice and sweet savor of God. Surely these have been with Jesus Christ, Acts 4.13. Communion with God, he says, is the very life, soul, and crown of all your closet duties. Therefore, press after it as for life. When you go into your closets, let everything go that may hinder your fruition of Christ and let everything be embraced that makes way for your enjoyment of Christ. Oh, let closet prayer be your golden bridge, a chariot to convey your souls over to God and bring you into a more intimate communion with God. Let no closet duty satisfy you or content you wherein you have not conversed with God as a child converses with his father or a wife converses with her husband or a friend converses with his friend, even face to face. Nothing speaks out more unsoundness, falseness, and baseness of heart than this. When a man make it, this is important. When a man make, can begin, hold on, I lost my place, sorry. When men make duty the end of duty, prayer the end of prayer, that when men can begin a duty, go on in a duty, close up in a duty, and bless and stroke themselves after duty, and yet never enjoy the least communion with God in the duty. So we, we need not to make prayer an end of the duty that we're, oh, I got my prayer done, or oh, I got this closet time done, or oh, I got my, my time in the Word done. No, Thomas Brooks is saying, open your Bibles to pray and to read and to seek and to fellowship with God. Make that your end in seeking Him and knowing Him. And and uh, so a lot of these guys, this, uh, Thomas Brooks was 1600s. Um, and so they spent a lot of time in prayer and communion with the Lord. And these are the, some of the things they wrote on the communion with God. And uh, I wanted to read a Spurgeon quote too, because I thought it was fascinating as well and really good. Um, Charles Spurgeon uh, did not write. Yeah, here you go. Uh, Spurgeon on this one is really good. The Lord loves the fellowship of his people. He invites them to commune with him. Come, my people. He points out the way to fellowship. Enter you in the chamber, chambers and shut the doors about you, Spurgeon says. That is, get alone with your God. Then he provides for this communion. Christ is our hiding place. And he himself comes to meet us. Come, my people. I invite you, beloved, tonight if you can, 
for as soon as you ever can. To have a special season given up to nothing else but fellowship with God, that you may now begin again a fellowship that afterwards shall not easily be broken. Pray. If you feel that you cannot pray, read. Let God speak to you. Get into conversation with him somehow. A conversation, you know, needs two to engage with it, in it. Hear what God says to you. Read a passage from his word and then pray. If you find you cannot pray, praise, worship. Say something to him and then read again and let him speak to you. But come not away until he has spoken to you and you have very distinctly spoken with him. Let this be the burden of your prayer. Lord, I want to come to you. I want through Jesus Christ, my mediator, to have fellowship with you and to abide in him in nearness to you. May the Lord help you in this matter, for truly there is life, no life like it. And there is no life like fellowshipping and communion with the living God. And so, brethren, I, 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 I urge you, I beseech you, by the mercies of God, to offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to him and to come to him and just lay yourself at his altar to fellowship with him. And he will come just like he came down in the tent in the tabernacle in Israel, and the, the glory of the Lord was there, he will fellowship and commune with us. And he, he calls us to this fellowship. And we need, to, we, need to, we need to put the barometers on our hearts and our minds, the thermometer, the barometer, whatever, and say, Lord, where is my desires? Where are my affections? Am I, am I longing to fellowship with you? Is my heart to commune with you? And um, Jeremiah uh, 9.23 is a really good verse I wanted to share too on what the Lord calls us to. He says, thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glories glory in this, that he understands and knows me that I am the Lord which exercises loving kindness and judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. So the Lord says, let he that glories and knows me. It's all about knowing him. And um, so many scriptures about seeking him. Um, I think of John um, 14, where God says he dwells with us. He abides with us. Um, and he does that by the spirit. Um, John 14, 16. And I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you or dwell with you forever. This is how close our God is. He dwells with us. Remember, Paul preached in Athens, Mars Hill, and he told them, God, the God you don't know, the unknown God is, is right here. God is so close. And we can come to him. And we can know him personally and intimately. Um, Romans 7, it says that we are married to the Lord Jesus Christ. We are married to him. Um, John 17, 24. Steve, you still there? Yes, yeah, still here, Chad. Okay, just you're, wanted to make sure. You're coming through loud and clear. <clears throat> okay, good. John 17, 24. Listen to this wonderful prayer by the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundation of the world. And as the Father has loved the Son, that love has been given to us. And so... The Lord Jesus Christ's prayer to the Father is that we may be with him. Not only, and so we need, we, we need this, this now where we need to be with him now so we're prepared for eternity, to be with him for all eternity. Because that's, that's, what, that's what life is, to know him and to be with him. That's why Paul says, be with him that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and be conformed into his death. That was Paul. Paul says all other things are done compared to the excellency of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why Paul was so enamored with the love of Jesus Christ. He spoke of it so many times. And even in the church of Corinthians, he said some of the same things. What were we called to? Just think of 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 1. It says, God is faithful by whom you are called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. He's called us into this fellowship. That is what we're here Saints, we're here to fellowship with the living God. 
We're here to fellowship with the living God. Second Corinthians 5, 4 is another good one. It says, For we know that of our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly. Oh, Lord, give me more groaning. <laughs> Desire to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but that we uh, clothed upon, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up with life. I was telling people in the grocery store yesterday, I said, oh, I can't wait to die. I want to go to heaven and see Christ to be clothed with immortality. We're in these bodies growing, wa groaning, uh, waiting for the redemption of these bodies. But we have this hope in us that say, oh, one day we're going to be with him forever. So um, in scriptures, I see in Corinthians, God has called us to fellowship. Um, 2 Corinthians 13, 14, this is another good verse. He closes saying, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and the love of the Father, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. What a closing statement that is. Um, the Lord desires for us to commune with him, to seek him. And it's, it, it, it goes both ways, where we pour out our house to the Lord, but, that, but then he wants to fill us with his word. That's why Paul says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. So God wants to speak to us through his word by the spirit, but we also then pour out our love back to him. It's so good just to just cry out to the Lord and tell you, oh, Lord, I love you. Oh, Father, you're so good. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are so precious. Um, and to have these, these affections go out to our, our great triune God. So, brethren, are you having these desires and longings? Do you want to be with Christ? Do you want to grow in this communion? Then shut the door, shut the closet, get in prayer and seek him and let him speak to you. And we cry out to him. Um, there were so many verses in Ephesians. In Ephesians, you see, um, you know, Paul, I said, had these prayers for them. And it is, there's a lot of love of Christ spoken of in Ephesians. And then we later on see in Revelation that they left first love. And so by way of rebuke, I, 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 you know, rebuke any here and possibly have you left first love as the church in Ephesus did. They left first love. Then repent and do the first works. Come back and seek the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's there. He is there. Um, in Ephesians 2, look at what we are built into. Ephesians 2, 20 or 19. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the buildings fit framed, fitly framed together grow unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together, look at this, for habitation of God through the Spirit. We are made living and living stones, lively stones, that we may be living epistles in Christ the church built together for the habitation of God. And that's why Steve mentioned earlier about the church coming together uh, and dwelling is, is, is so good to be together. And it's a little different with this Zoom thing. But anyhow, um, you talk about God wanting to fellowship with you. Look at Christ's uh, command there in Revelation 3.20. And is that, is that the church of Ephesus? I believe it is. Yeah. No, that's the Laodicea church. But still, even every church, the ones he rebukes, he says, behold, I, as many as I love, I rebuke, Revelation 3.19 and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Christ is knocking and saying, if any man hear my voice, open the door. A lot of these verses right here are used towards the lost. This is the church. I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. What an invitation. Christ is saying to the church in Laodicea, come, I will come and eat with you and fellowship with you. That's what fellowship with Christ is about, is dining with Christ. And, fellow, and he wants to dine with us. And, uh, and we're getting closer to time. But um, you see that, that the Lord Jesus Christ is a great king and high priest and head of the church, that he dwells within us and he wants to fellowship with us. 
So, brethren, we cannot take lightly the fellowship or the communion with God because our walk is going to be affected by this. As, as we, we covered briefly, there's so much to cover in the Old Testament there, how they, Abraham walked with God, Noah, and then they obeyed. You see that they obeyed because they had such faith in a walk with the Lord and fellowship that they were able then to carry it out and obey. And the same thing with us. God hasn't changed. His spirit is the same. That when we are dwelling in him more and more in his word in us, as it says in John 15, the I am the vine, you are the branches. He says that, that as you abide in me, my words richly dwell in you. And he says, whatever you ask, I will give you. And then, and then you know, it says in verse 15, I think of eight and nine, much fruit will be, be born in us. So a branch, I'm looking at trees right now. They're, they're starting to bud right now. They're not out here groaning to say, come on, get out the buds. No, they're just abiding in the trunk or the vine. And the same with us, we are to abide. We are to abide. He says, abide in me and my words abide in you. That's dwelling. The word abide is to dwell. And we are to dwell in his word, knowing the living Christ through his word and his words abiding in us. And we'll bear much fruit. The fruit will come. The obedience will come when we're abiding in him. And so seek him and know him intimately. Um, in closing, um, I have a couple more verses, and I think I just have just enough time to hopefully do these, is uh, is in Second Thessalonians. Um, it says that when Christ comes in chapter 1, he's going to take vengeance on those who do not know him and punish them with an everlasting destruction from his presence and from the glory of his power. But verse 10, in Second Thessalonians chapter 1, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you is believed in that day. So we're, we're going to be admiring in Christ on that great day when he comes, and he'll be glorified in us. Oh, I can't wait for that day. Come, Lord Jesus. The Spirit and the bride say come. And um, just read First John because it's so good on how God fellowships with his people. We've been called into this fellowship. But one verse I've noticed in, in 1 John, it says, verse 6 and 7, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not do the truth. But if we walk in the light as he in the, is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And I, every, every time I've read that verse, I've always thought that was fellowship with other people, other saints, but actually it's fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ and him with us. And so that verse 7 of 1 John is, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another with the, with the Lord Jesus and with us, and his blood cleanses us. Uh, his blood cleanses us from all sins. So that's uh, not only fellowship with one another, but fellowship with God himself. And then in closing, Revelation 21, um, I thought uh, these are some of my, one of my favorite verses in Revelation. And... Um, we are to grow in the grace of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, as it says in Second Peter. But in Revelation 21, verse 2, And I saw, I saw, and I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God, what does it say? Is with men. And he... <laughs> will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Wow, what a verse. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things that passed away. What a verse, verse three. God will tabernacle and will dwell with them forever. No more interruption with sin. No more anymore. Oh. In Revelation 22, 4, the last verse, I promise. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. Verse 4, 20, uh, Revelation 22, 4. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Oh, we shall see the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we'll know the, uh, as we know him, we'll know the Father. And so this is the great communion we have with him. Our triune God and the Spirit. Is, is is always jealous to provoking us 
to seek him, to know him. And um, let me close in prayer. Lord, I pray that you bless all the saints here today that joined. Pray that we would seek you and commune with you and our hearts would long after you as the deer pants after the waters. Give us more thirst in our souls, Lord. Let us hunger and thirst after you, our righteousness, and to be more in love with you, Lord Jesus. And gladly, Lord, you love to dine with us. So come dine with us, Lord. Dine with your church around the world. Dine with us in fellowship and let us have fruitful prayers in the closet in seeking you, Father, and seeking you, Lord Jesus. We ask this in your name. Amen.